YouTube giants that are the you know the giant structures, stone structures, and and I might I don't know I might do that again in, in in this setting. I'm just not sure. But I really didn't talk a lot about hybrids and kind of press forward a little bit more on that since about 10 years ago when I talked about it. And there's been a lot of changes that have that have taken place since then. Uh, and we're going to briefly go through some of those. Also make some scriptural comparisons of hybrids uh, and uh, DNA, CRISPR, chimeras, those things, but to understand really how that impacts us, and that's why I called it Days of Noah 2.0, because that's exactly what's coming. You know, what's already happened is what's coming again. The Bible warned us, Jesus warned us of that, and we're going to talk about that. Um, Genesis chapter 6 uh, verse uh, number 11 says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Well, look at the earth today. Well, let's pray first. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you uh, for all that you do for us. We pray you'd bless this time that we have together in the scriptures. And thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for these illustrations of truth, Lord, that we know all truth comes from the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, that there's a trail of all of that that shows us exactly what's going on in our world. We, we're not in the dark. We're not blind. We, we see because we have the light of Jesus Christ in his word. Help all those that don't have it to receive that today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Right here, the, the Bible says the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. What do we have today? Violence. Our, our world is full of violence. I mean, more so than at any other time besides this time back then. The Bible says that in the end times when Christ would return, that the earth, Christ said that the earth will be filled with violence. It'll be a violent place. It'll be just like the days of Noah. It'll be a very terrible place. Uh, and we're, we're coming to that. We're coming to that where all manner of debauchery and evil and wickedness and vileness is accepted in the world today. I mean, you can't slaughter your own children uh, to the tune of millions upon millions a year in this nation and expect that and, and, not, see, not, and not realize that that's what we have as a nation of violence. We, we just do. You see it in the streets. You see lawlessness and wickedness everywhere abounding. Uh, Jesus said it would be like that in the return. And it's, by the way, it's not just like that here. It's like that all over the world. Uh, everywhere you go, it's like that. And we help to export that all over the world, too. You know, without getting too much into this, because I, I already ta I talked about this on my broadcast about Ukraine and Russia and things like, like that. But let me just say this about that. The things that Russia is doing in Ukraine is no different than the things that we did in Afghanistan. Right. And don't ever let anybody tell you any differently. Right. Now, you, 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 you could, I, I understand people want to sing the virtues of America and everything else, but I'm telling you, the same things that are going on over there, we did the same. We wiped out whole villages yeah. in Iraq and Afghanistan and places like that. We wiped them out, we murdered them, we killed them. That's right. Little kids, every babies, everything. Wiped them all out and destroyed all of them. We did those things. Our military did those things. You say, Pastor, you're not being very pro-military. I know I'm pro-Christ. I wasn't ever called to be pro-military. I was called to speak, to preach God's word and to tell the truth about it, no matter who the liar is, no matter who the, who the foe is. And I'm telling you that if you, think, if you think that there's virtuous things that went on, if you think garden poppy fields over in Afghanistan and 91.9% .9 of all the drug traffic came over there after we invaded there and put our troops down there and guarded the poppy fields, then yeah, you've, you've really drank some Kool-Aid. You really drank it if you believe that that was about liberating anyone. Cause, or, or Iraq was about Saddam Hussein being a bad guy. Please. I just, I, I, I won't be dishonest like that because I have to stand before God and be like, why did you defend that debauchery? Why, why did you defend that? Right? I, I don't defend it. Right? I stand very firmly against it. And you say, well, do you, I, I have a brother-in-law in the military. He knows the way I stand on things. I won't pull any punches for any of that. Why? Because I have to answer to God for it. And I'm not going to say something that's not, I'm not going to promote something that's not true. But the things that were going on over there in Afghanistan, they're, they're going on over in the Ukraine. Yeah, the, yeah, he's doing the same. The th same things are happening. But we're no better. Our military, we have no right to be over there. Doing, what is it? It's violence. The earth is filled with violence. R wars and rumors of wars. Right. right? Empire building. We're accusing Russia wants to be an empire. Okay, well, what do we want to be? Right. 
What, 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 what do we do? What? Why are we over there on somebody else's border, protecting their border, getting into fights with people over there? Yeah. Why are we doing that? Right. So who's the empire? Uh, but anyway, so the point is, is that that the earth, the Bible says that it would be that the earth is filled with violence at that time. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. By the way, those things that I just said to you are very hard for people to hear. They're very hard because America is, you know, we're very, uh, we're we're very much like the Roman, the the, the Roman Empire. Yeah. If you study the Roman Empire and patriotism for the glory of Rome, that's right. right? And that's the same thing that goes on today when you have your, your events and, your, and, and people just, and I get it, the World War II generation, everything, I, I get it. I understand why they saw virtue in some of those things. I, I get it. I understand. I, I'm not, I, I get it. I don't agree with it, but I get it, okay? Uh, but when you see what's going on today in our world and how things have progressed today, you could hardly say that, that this is, there, there's any virtue to any of it, right? That, that you, you just, you can't really, if you're honest about it, if you understand what's really going on, if you don't just buy into what Fox News says or what MSNBC says or what either one of the Hegelian dialectic groups say. Everybody's pushing God's people, trying to push God's people into one of these groups, Right? Every one is trying to. And God's people have to understand how to navigate through that with this book and know the truth and be like, you know what? I don't agree with any of it. I don't, I don't agree with any of it. I'm not, like, I, let me be plain with you. So people, people may not think that I'm very clear, so I'll be very clear. Uh, <laughs> with, with something like this. I don't want to go kill Russians. Like, I, I, I don't want to. I, I don't have any desire to go. I, like, I don't have any desire for our children. And you won't like this church if you, if, 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 if you don't like the fact that I'm never going to promote the children of this church to go into the military. Amen. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm not. There's an army for them to join, and it's the Lord's army. Right. There's a work for them to do, and it's a gospel work. It's not to go over there and die in the sand for somebody else, for some other cause other than the cause of Christ. If you go die in the sand for the gospel's sake, praise the Lord. If you go die in the sand for some rich people to make money, you're a fool. Amen. That's, that's just the way I am. I, that, I, I can't see it any other way because I've watched them fill the minds of these kids and fill them with delusions of grandeur about these things. And it's like, I don't want my kids going over. I don't want your kids going over there dying over there. I don't want them killing other kids. I don't want them doing that. Yeah, I, I don't want them to have, I don't, I've seen those soldiers. I've talked to them. I've pastored soldiers that came back from doing that stuff. I, I mean, they, they're tortured, even saved, tormented, tormented. Yeah. very tormented. It's just, why, why, why would I ever want to promote that? You know what we need? We need preachers of the gospel. We need wives to support husbands that are preachers of the gospel. We need churches planted. That's the only way you change the world. You don't do it through brute force and guns and violence and everything else. You do it through the gospel. It's always been the way the world has been, uh, people have been influenced. It's always been the way that, that change happens. America didn't get great because of the Revolutionary War. God used the Great Awakening of America Amen. to shake the continent, to shake the area, to shake it for Christ. God used revival. Amen. Those things aren't popular, right? They're, they're not. And th by the way, that's why a lot of people wouldn't like this church either, because I, I don't, like, you won't come marching through here with uniforms. You won't come, we won't have flags up here marching through with uniforms and, and having... I like referring to them as costumes. Costumes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you, we, don't, we don't do that here. Like, I won't have a Navy recruiter, an Army recruiter come in and talk to the children like Christian schools do. And, I, and we don't hang the Christian flag, the Christian flag, the Constantine flag. We don't hang that either. We'll just, we don't do it. And I, make, and I make no apologies about it. And that's why no one likes me. I don't get invited anywhere. But that's okay. Right? It's fun, though. I, I like it. Anyway.
I like it. It keeps me busy here. I have enough trouble. Uh, questions to ponder. Here's what we're going to ask ourselves. By the way, that was free. Didn't cost you anything. That's why it takes an hour and a half to get through this. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Questions to ponder. Uh, are there are there really hybrids? It's a good question, right? That's that's the question. We're going to show you some Bible hybrids, and we're going to show you some that man is trying to make today, and that men are making today, and why that matters. You know why it matters. Then we're going to show you that spirit of hybridization, which if you're not careful, you can fall for, right? And we're going to look at some of those issues, uh, some some of the devotional aspects of that too, as well. Uh, you know, does the Bible speak of them? That's another question we're going to answer. How did all flesh become corrupted? And is there a return to the days of Noah? Is, is there that time? You know, talking about these things, explaining these things is important for people to understand what's really going on. If you remember, who remembers this PowerPoint that I did about uh, two years ago? Creatures from the underworld, hybrids from hell. Uh, this was, oh no, two years ago? Yeah. Or almost three maybe. Close to when Pastor Hodger came Okay. Um, uh, the creatures from the underworld, hybrids from hell. We talked about some of those hybrids that are underground and that the Bible speaks of, right? So we're, we'll deal a little bit with those. And I want to start with the scriptures because that's our authority, that this thing is possible. I, by the way, uh, the giants were hybrids. They were hybrids. Sons of God, daughters of men, we're going to talk about that. They were hybrids. They were not, they were not human. They were hybrids. The giants are never... Uh, never never uh, spoken of as, as purely human. Now the Bible talks about these locusts and scor these locust scorpions, right? That is one ugly thing right there. Uh, Revelation 9, 3, And there came out the, of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Boy, that's not going to be fun. Uh, th those, those, those creatures, the Bible talks about some pretty scary creatures. It really does. Like, you can't imagine something in your mind as scary as the things that are going to happen in those end times, right? In, the, in that time of the day of the Lord or right before the day of the Lord at that time, right? There's going to be some scary things. You better be saved by the grace of God now. You better trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. I don't care what timing you believe the rapture is coming or any of those other things. You need to be saved now. Beloved, now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. You know, but, but there's, there's, a, there's a deception coming upon all the earth, and there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen. And we better, be, we better be walking with the Lord. By the way, it can get a lot, it can get a lot worse here without, without that rapture, without that time period, right? It can get a lot worse. God, I mean, look what the Waldensians went through when 50 millions of them were destroyed and slaughtered. 100 million of them were slaughtered and destroyed. I mean, they probably, did, don't you think they believe the, they did. They said the Pope was the Antichrist. It's here now. We're here. This is the end times. It's done. We're done. I, can, I mean, wouldn't you believe it if you watched everybody die like that? I sure would. I would have believed it. Right, exactly. So that's one of those ugly creatures right there. And now, obviously, it's a depiction of an ugly creature like there that's in Revelation chapter 9. It's not the exact. We don't know what it's going to look like. This is just giving you some kind of an idea. Uh, hair like a woman, right? Uh, by the way, th there is hair like a woman. That means a woman is supposed to have long hair, right? Longer hair than a man, right? And that means men are to have short hair, right? Men aren't to be growing out long flowing locks and all that, all that stuff like that, right? The Bible's very dis descriptive. You know, I thought this was very encouraging, though. Uh, whatever time you believe the rapture is going to take place, pre, post, trib, uh, there's differences of opinion on those things. There always has been, by the way, and there always will be uh, until Jesus comes back and straightens us all out. But uh, these serpents and scorpions, though, I like what the Bible says about that. Look at this. Uh, some people may wonder, well, would we survive if that happened, if God's people were here? Well, the Bible says in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Uh, do, do I, if you ask me, do I believe God can protect me through it? Yeah, I do. I absolutely do. I do. I watched, he, the, the scripture shows us what he did in Israel, how he protected all of Israel and all the plagues came upon everyone else that was in all of Egypt, right? They were all the world. We aren't the world. Amen. This is a hybrid, right? This is, this is a, a satyr or a satire, whatever, however you say it, but satyr is how they mostly say it. Here's, this is a depiction of one, right? Ugly looking, creepy thing, weird thing. But this, this, this creature, by the way, it looks a lot like Pan, right? The god Pan, Bacchus, right? Uh, different, different. By the way, the god of revelry and and wickedness and lasciviousness and and drunkenness and all that other stuff. Okay, notice this right here. Um, 
this is in history. This is how this has been. This creature has been. This hybrid has been depict, depicted. Okay, now uh, we do have a reference to these in the scriptures. Isaiah chapter thirteen, verse number twenty-one. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their house shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. Dance. Right? Right. This is, this is, this is a hybrid here. Isaiah, there's, a, there's another reference to it. Isaiah chapter 34, verse number 22. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses. And dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come. And her days shall not be prolonged. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find herself a place of rest. These are depicted around the, the doleful creatures, the desolate places, the devils, where devils hang out, where desolate places are. Where say, so do you believe those were real hybrid creatures? Yeah, I, I really do actually believe that. Uh, how did they get there? Um, some monkey business going on. That's how they got there. They, they got there by messing with the DNA of creatures, I believe, and just like they're doing right now. It's like they're messing with DNA right now. They're, they, they're, they're doing it now. And, and I mean, they're doing it through all kinds of different means, right? They're, they're sending uh, through RNA, through different things like that, right? They're wanting to send messages. They're, they're changing through CRISPR, which we're going to talk about a little bit. By, by the way, back when I talked about this originally, there was no CRISPR talked about. This was uh, 2011, I think it was the first time, or 12. There was no CRISPR. Right. It wasn't there. That came later. Right? Right? And they're, they're developing even more. Yep. Right? They're developing even more. But, but these creatures, right, the, the hybridization, the mixture of these creatures are there. Yep? I got, uh, I got a customer that's a hedgehog. Yep. <coughs> and there's a, there's a disease that's been around a long time. Mm-hmm. The vaccine or the uh, or the disease? disease. Okay. It, it kills a lot of hogs. Now the vaccine actually does work. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to or whatever. Um, but it gets stronger. The disease gets stronger. Yes. And there's a straight now they're working on uh, editing gene editing the hogs so that they can that they won't. Yeah, they're immune to it. So they won't succumb to it. Mm -hmm. And I asked them about and they're directly they're beta testing or whatever or doing all that. Yes. They're, I said, how far away are you from getting that? And he said, probably two, three years. Right. Right. And they, they're doing it in a number of different things. Uh, designing your own baby, which I didn't talk about in here, but they're they're doing that through having three parents uh, for children. They're doing it through all of those things. Yeah. See, see, uh, 10, 11 years ago, when I when I first started talking about this, I just it just sounded crazy. Like you're like oh, whatever. It's, just, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, but now you see it later. It is. A, it, it's becoming a bigger deal, right? This this did get on sermon audio, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want, wanted to make sure because. Um, okay. Anyway, so the wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. There you go. Okay, satyr shall dance there. You, you, this is a hybrid. By the way, the Revelation 9 was the, f the first one we talked about, hybrids. They're not pure locusts. They're not pure creatures. They're hybrids, right? Webster. Webster's Dictionary's definition of, a, of, of this satyr is, uh, is a monkey, a fawn, <coughs> right? In mythology, a Sylvian deity or demigod represented as a monster, half man and half goat, having horns on his head and a hairy body with the feet and tail of a goat. Satyrs are usually found in the train of Bacchus and have been distinguished for lasciviousness and riot. They have been represented as remarkable for their piercing eyes and keen raillery. So the, these are, the, this definition of this, right, the word is found in the King James Bible, right? And you can tell by the definition that Webster uses that the scriptures 
our ba what the scriptures are, are telling us first, which is our authority, and then this just is like a second witness to the fact that that's... No, no, they're not. They're never in a good place. These creatures, these doleful creatures, look at the other hybrids. Look at the ones that are below the earth, right? They're breeding down there, breeding, breeding an army. They're breeding an army of the, those creatures are just breeding an army, right? They're there, and they're, they're constantly doing that, constantly doing that. Uh, and, and these satyrs, I, do, do I, do, if you ask me, do you believe there's hybrids on this earth today? Yes. Do I, I didn't even talk about those chupacabras and those other weird creatures that are out there. I didn't really, because they weren't in the Bible, but, but those other creatures that are found out there, like those that people, I mean, I've talked to some people, pretty reputable people that saw some pretty crazy things in Mexico when they were in there in different areas like that. They, they saw some pretty scary looking things out there. Uh, do I believe that's possible? Absolutely. There, the genetic testing and the things like that, you know, the, let me put it this way. There, the theory of gray aliens and different things like that, some of those things might just be, might just be hybrids, experimentations on children and different things like that. Oh, you don't think our, our government would ever do anything like that? Yeah, they, no, they would pay China to do it for them now. Right? Just like they did with that lab over there. John Gill, John Gill's commentary, he says about the satyr, a sort of monstrous creatures with the ancients, painted half man and half goats, the upper part of them like men except the horns of their heads, and the lower part like goats, and all over hairy, and the, and the word here used signifies hairy, and is used for goats, and sometimes for devils, either because they've appeared in this form. John Gill's very conservative when it comes to, comes to the word of God as far as some men would consider John Gill extremely dry because he's very ultra conservative when it comes to his exposition on scripture and things of that nature. So very strict when it when it comes to that type of thing. You know, uh, we would disagree with him in other areas, but but in these areas, he would be strict. And that was his depiction of that. It reminds me of Baphomet. You know, Baphomet is a hybrid. This is the most uh, decent picture of Baphomet I could put on here because the rest of them uh, show the male female deity uh, body parts that I just really didn't want to put in front of you. Uh, so, uh, but it, as you see, this is a, a bust or a, 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 the head of Baphomet here. You have the Baphomet is depicted normally with female breasts. It's a male deity with female breasts and female body parts. You have the as is above, so is below uh, sign that is. On there, that's Baphomet is pretty much the god of this androgynous movement that's in America, which is hybridization, which we'll talk about a little bit. Remember when I did that series on androgyny and I talked about, I did a few things. I'm going to have a, a few little uh, slides in here about androgyny. But androgyny is that mixture of male-female, right? It is that, that male-female mixture, which is what really is being promoted today. No one wants the distinctions of male-female. They, 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 want, they want to merge those two together. This is what makes people upset uh, also today, even among our churches. When you don't preach these types of things to people, the role of the sexes, male, female, keeping everything strict and understanding that. By the way, that doesn't mean that all of you are going to be able to follow some of those things. Some of you have to work and do different things outside of that role because of sin that took place and different things that happened. We understand that. The point is, is that what you have to understand is God's word doesn't change, though. His truth doesn't change, and God has a, a place in there for things that happen when sin occurs and different things like that. Your, it might not be your sin. It might have been another man's sin that caused that. There are people that, there's a lady, I talked to a man um, that his wife, he sent me a message on Facebook, and he said, you know, I agree with you, preacher. He goes, but my, my wife, because of her marriage and the, and the child, the, the, they're, they're forcing my wife to pay child support, and her husband, her first husband, he was a really wicked man. He did a lot of wicked things, she said. And, but she wasn't saved at the time. She got saved, right? And they forced her to pay child support, and her husband couldn't pay it. They told him he couldn't pay it. She had to pay it. And I thought, wow, that's something. I've never heard that before. But I believe him. I mean, I don't, he, he's tenderhearted. He wants to do right. And he, he said this is, and there's like one more year or something when the child's older and then it's over. But 
but that's the position that she found herself in, that, that sin has an impact on us, right? It, it, it changes things. It, it doesn't change the truth, but it changes what we have to do sometimes. Sometimes as a result of sin, things aren't as clean. That's why I talk to couples when they get married, uh, blended uh, families. And I talk to them about that very specifically before they decide to do that. I mean, I... I've, I've counseled that and I've preached on that because it's just because just because it's lawful for you to get that marriage doesn't mean you should. There may be certain things that are going to be hindrances and you need to be prepared for those hindrances. See, those are uncomfortable things that people don't want to talk about, but they need to be. Well, this this Baphomet, this this hybrid, this hybridization, it's it, it is it's these false gods. Right. And uh, here's another one in uh as is above, so is below. You have the you, you have the the Masonic order, the um, Temple uh, order, uh, Aleister Crowley's group, those other groups like that. They have that same they have that same teaching, that hybridization, that sons of God, daughters of men teaching, that perversion there, that other spirit that's there. As is above, so is below. Same thing. Uh, you see, I didn't put that picture in, but you see it in our Capitol uh, where they designed all the buildings and they designed the. The, that what is that sea called or that body of water that's in front of the, the monument there? What's that called? I forget. I've been there. I can't remember. What's that? What is it? Yeah, the reflective pool. That, I forget what that's called, uh, but right there they do. What's that? Did you say something? No? Okay. Um, but that, that I, I can't remember what it's called, but I remember it. It's by the Lincoln Memorial, I thought, and all that right there. And I, I've been there, but it's been 10 years since I've been there. Maybe 15. Um, I think it's been 15, actually, since I've been there. But anyway, I remember that, and I remember being out there, and, you know, I didn't know a lot, a lot of that stuff at that time, but, but I learned more of it later. But this is the magician card, right? You see, as is above, so is below. Same, same principles, right? Hybridization. It's, it's, it's the hybridization. You see the infinity symbol above the head, right? Yes, as is above, so is below, right there, right? That's what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. What do they do? They pull down from heaven, right? They say they bring Christ down from heaven. Uh, the Masonic order, right here, uh, the, the Masonic symbol, right? Here's their, here's their main symbol. This is how they speak to people. When they have these symbols, they speak in symbols. When they have those symbols, that's what they do, right? They, they show these. That's what people, uh, you know, I've told you this story before, but, but quickly, um, People that wear, that's the all-seeing eye at the top there. People that, that advertise or wear the Masonic ring, that's their, that's their language. That's what they're speaking. They, they, they're speaking this thing, right? This, this language. Their, their symbols are a language. So when they do that, when they speak that, I had a pastor one time that said, well, he let members be in his church that were Masons. He said, as long as they, as long as they don't preach it or speak it, I said, well, he's carrying around the Masonic ring. He, that's, that's what he's doing. He's advertising. He's, he's speaking. That's, that's what speaks are the symbols, right? I was like, okay. Anyway, what does it say, though? It says, what does hybridization say? It says confusion and distortion. That's what it says. That's what it's meant to say. That's what androgyny is. Why do you think you have so many children? Man, you look at that kid in Michigan that blew that family away, or that blew those kids away in that school. Man, I'm telling you what, that kid is so messed up. You, the young males of America are so confused and messed up because they're told their entire existence is wrong. Right? It's wrong to be a boy. It's wrong to learn to be a man. It's wrong. You all are shielded from that here. But I'll tell you something, you want to get me fired up and angry about it, I will, I will bark loud about it. I hate feminism. I absolutely hate that Jezebel spirit. I hate that, and I consider it a badge of honor when women that hold to that hate my guts. I consider it a badge of honor. I consider it a badge of honor when effeminate men don't like me. I consider it a badge of honor to wear. Because that confusion is what's causing the destruction and the annihilation today of the family and the home. Because we've left that for this hybridization. Because we just want to soft pedal everything and get along. I really don't care if it makes people mad. In fact, 
Never mind, I won't say that. Anyway, 1 Corinthians 14, 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. You know what? The whole world preaches against this book and God's order and against the church. And they get all offended when a preacher stands up and preaches it exactly the way the Bible says it and says, no, that's the way God intended it to be. And by the way, some of these people fall into the banner of being Christians and they don't like it because that's a little too straight, Pastor. That's a little too narrow, Pastor. That's a little too straight on. Right? They, they don't like that. But because the world likes hybridization, they love it. They absolutely love it. They do. Satan loves confusion, right? He loves distortion. That's what he loves. That's, that's confusion. What did the Bible say about, about fornication and sexual sins and, and, and bestiality and all that? He said it wrought confusion in Israel. He said it wrought confusion those things did. They were confusion that it wrought. You ever see young children being very confused when things like that happen to them, when they're, when they're exposed to wicked uh, movies or anything else, you know, uh, violations of, of, uh, of things and molestations and things like that. When it, it rots confusion in their mind. The Bible warns of those things, that they're confusion, right? Here's another hybrid. Look at these. You have the New King James Version, the New International Version, the New World Translation, right? This is hybrids. These are hybrids. Aren't they? You believe that, don't you? You believe these, these seeds aren't pure seeds, right? Right. You have the, the, the one that's not corrupt right here. Oh, wh why? Hey, I got a question for you. How come this one right here is different than all those? How come there's one that's different than all those? One that's attacked. You don't ever hear anybody proof texting the NIV. You don't ever hear anybody. Whoa, I hit the wrong button. You don't ever hear anybody proof texting the, like they're not correcting the ASV. They're not correcting the NASB. What are they going after? That book right there. Why? Because it's the one that's different. That's why. That's why. It's the one that's different. You, you won't, you know, you won't see that. By the way, you don't even see John MacArthur in, his, in, his, in, in all of his intelligence that's going off and changing all the Bible versions because he, he don't think it's Calvinistic enough, the one that he has. So he's going to make it more Calvinistic, and he's going to change his theory, or he's going to change, change that Bible to match his complete theory of his theology. Well, that's being honest. He should do that, really, because you won't get that in the King James Bible, what he believes. So what is he going to do? He's going to change it and make it say what he wants it to say. Amen. That'll make some of you mad, but that's good. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but you see this right here. The, how about the Living Bible paraphrase? What are these? These are all other seeds. These are other seeds. That's what they are. Yeah, they're mingled seed. They're hybrids, aren't they? They're all hybrids. Why, why, how do you know that, preacher? Well, they all say something different than this does. That's how. They, they all say something different. No, they're not pure. They're tainted. They're hybridized. They've been, and by the way, just like all of these other versions and just like the Latin Vulgate, just like all those, they have a Roman Catholic Jesuit on the, on the translation committee. Every single one of them. Hmm. Well, that's odd. Not really. This is our authority. This is the simplicity that's in Christ. This right here. Here's our simplicity right here. This King James Bible. That's the simplicity. If you, wanna, if you don't want to be confused, then follow the book. If you want to get confused, then try to monkey with the book. Try to change it. Try to pervert the seed. Try to hybridize, hybrid, try hybridization. Try to mix the seeds genetically. They don't See, there's spiritual genes with these. These right here. This right here, these have spiritual genes. They do. They have a DNA. These books do, right? They have a DNA. What is it? It's a hybrid. It's mixed. You know what they did? They used a spiritual CRISPR, and they edited things out that they didn't like, right? So now you have a Bible version for everything that somebody wants to take a spiritual CRISPR to, right? And they want to edit out of the book the sin that does so easily beset them. Right? They want to edit out the book who God is. They want to edit out of the book 
uh, how much God hates sin. They want to edit those things out of the book. They want to edit, to edit it to fit their DNA for what they want, for what they're trying to create, right? They're not objective to the truth. They don't want that, of course. This is a hybrid. That's skillet. No, it's not frying in a pan, but it looks like it. This is skillet. This is CCM music. This is Christian rock music, so to speak. That's a hybrid. Right. All right, there's nothing Christian, but that's what it's called. That's CCM. So if you showed up there, right, that's, that's a hybrid. Don't you, don't you believe that's a hybrid? Well, what's hybrid about it? Well, that's rock music, which was made, rock is literally fornication. The whole music genre was made about that. It's African voodoo beats, which, gets, which makes people call me a racist as well. You racist. You misogynist racist. Yeah. So you, you, have, you, have the, um, you, you have the African voodoo beats, right, that they all admit that's where they came from. Uh, they, all, they all admit it. I mean, it's not, it's not a secret. They all admit it and brag about it. But now it's racist to say it. It's where it came from, among other places, but that's one of the major places it came from. I'll put it that way. Not the only place, but one of the major ones. And by, what, by the way, what was it? It's a spirit music. This rock music is a spirit. There's a spirit behind it. This is the spirit of Antichrist. This doesn't glorify God. This isn't music that glorifies God. This is a hybrid. Benny Hinn. Benny's a hybrid. I don't know what he's made of, but he's a hybrid. Benny's a hybrid, right? His theology, his, his, his mixture, right? His, his spiritual, the spirit that he follows, that's hybridization, right? That's a spirit, yeah, what is that? Um, what did he say, they died? Oh, they said they died? Uh, probably. Um, but that, that's hybridization, right? That's what that is. That's not the spirit of Christ. You don't find what he's doing in the Bible. What is it? Well, charismatics and Pentecostals are rip-off Baptists that left the Baptist faith that because, because they wanted to dance and play with serpents, and they wanted to rock out, and they, 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 wanted, to have, they wanted to feel something. No, I'm serious. If you study the Pentecostal movement, that's exactly what it is. And then they say for us that you just need to be filled with the Spirit. Those Baptist people need to be filled with the Spirit. Well, I agree. They do need to be. But it won't be by the way you say. Right? right? But this, th th that's a hybrid, right? This is a hybrid. This is, this is popular today. Remember this? I showed this to you a few years ago. You don't remember that? Okay, here's your nightmare. Um, Deuteronomy 22, 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination of the Lord thy God. That's still in the Bible. Right? But this man dresses himself up in makeup, and he wants to hybrid up. He wants to be, he's a hybrid. He's androgynous. That's what, that's what androgyny is. It's hybridization. That's what that is, right? It's no, it's, it's no sex, no, identifal se no ident identifal, identifying sexual characteristics, right? Just a mixture of the two together, right? Mm -hmm. This is hybridization. See the long hair hippies? See that? Those are supposed to be guys. That's a hybridization. That's what they're doing to boys today. That's real. But by the way, that's not new. Do you all think that's new? No, that's not new. The Roman Empire was doing that. Yeah, the Egyptians, Roman Empire, all of them, all the way down through the centuries. See, Pastor, do you really believe that high-level people in the United States federal government run a trafficking ring that does this very thing? Well, yeah. Of course they do. Right? Of, of course they do. Like, of course. They... Yes. They, I, you, you can't fathom that or imagine that, can you? Remember what the Bible says? That they would sell a boy for a whore? Remember that? That's what I was talking about. These are parents that do this to their children. When they turn them androgynous or when they change, their, when they change them, right? When they, when they do that right there, that's... That's, parents do that. Those are parents that do that. And, and a public school that promotes that. Say, not my public school. Oh, yeah, they do. 
Yeah, they do. If your kid walked in there like that, they wouldn't say a thing to them. They'd be like, okay, we'll use your personal pronouns, whatever you like to be. What is that? Are you an it? What are you exactly? No, you're a widget. That's what you are. That's what are you, right? I prefer to be called thing one and thing two. Why don't you just call me that? Right? That's because, right? No, I mean, that's what they would do. That's, that's a hybrid, right? That's confusion. That's confusion, right? That's, that's confusion. That's hybridization. That's androgyny. That's what's popular today, though. You just go, just walk downtown in Northfield when it's warm out and there's, and there's children everywhere. Children, they're not going to look like you. They don't, they, they don't look like most of you. In fact, they think you're the freaks. They look at you like, what's wrong with them guys? What's wrong with those girls? They actually look like girls. How come they're not all butched out with spikes? Spiked hair and, and beards and stuff, right? No, seriously, like you're, you're going to, I hope you know, I just want to prepare you for something. Be, you know, if, you, if you're going to have, you know, long hair and dress like a lady and wear skirts and all that kind of stuff, you, you're, you're going to be a weirdo. Like you, you are the weirdos now, more than ever. Might be a good way to score a high-level government job, though. Yeah, maybe. Oh, to look like that, you mean? Yeah, just keep buying these little pointy things. Yeah. The transgender medical professional that can't even distinguish what sex it is and believe it's in fairy tales that they can be a transgender? Oh, there is? Which one's that one? I'm sorry, I didn't know that one. Oh, great. <laughs> what is it? It's a transgender? Oh, you got to kid me. It's great. So somebody in charge of nuclear defenses. <laughs> They're not unstable at all, right? Nuclear, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not. That is androgyny. That is confusion. And by the way, that's what we see when we go out and preach. We see the same thing. When we go up to Minneapolis and that gang of, uh, of black transgenders, remember that? And my son, after we were all done, my son goes, man, that girl was weird. I said, son, that's not a girl. Those were all boys. He just, he was like. <laughs> nope, those are all boys. Every single one of them. Right? So now you see like when I bark and I yell and I, and I, and I scream and I holler about this stuff. You know, years ago when you talked about these things, the role of the sexes and everything else, no one could dream that you would get to this point. Now you see, and I praise God, now you see preaching the same thing year after year and saying, now you see more importantly, you've been trained to know the truth. You have no excuse. Amen. Here's another hybrid. Female preachers. Female pastors. Uh, the president, the former president of the United States pastor. I don't know what that is. Um, that's the Joker. <laughs> the Joker, Joyce Meyer. That's Beth Moore, a.k.a. a witch. And I don't know who that lady is, woman is. But anyway, none of them are ladies. Because if they were ladies, they'd be conducting themselves as ladies. Amen. What would they be? They'd be submissive to their husbands, and they'd be home, and they wouldn't be usurping authority. They are Jezebels. That's exactly what they are. I don't care what good works they do. I don't care what, what things they do. They are Jezebels. And if you don't like that, your heart's not right with God. Get your heart right with God. Don't get mad at me. Just get right with God. Because they're the ones usurping authority. Why aren't you mad at them? You ought to be mad at them. Amen. And if you're not, you got something in your heart. You need to have God take out. Amen. You need something put down in your heart. Amen. Right? These are the days of Noah. See, these... You know the destruction that has been caused? By the way, Beth Moore did everything she did to, could do to drop nuclear bombs in the Southern Baptist Convention, which is not virtuous anyway, but, but to drop bombs and destroy it. And then she walked away and joined some weird Episcopalian, weird uh, Anglican church where she's like, where there's some lady stood up and they're doing, I don't know, it's, it's all Catholic, whatever. It's all, to me, it's all Catholic. When you say Anglican, when you say that, I just say, well, you're Catholic. That's, that's just, you're just all Catholics. All the, you're just a bunch of Catholics is all you are, whatever. You can call it Episcopalian, whatever. You're all Catholics. 
You're all Catholics. That's all you are. You're all under Rome. That's all, that's all there is to it. You look like Rome. You walk like Rome. You talk like Rome. And you, you smell like Rome with that opium you put in that thing of yours. Um, Matthew 24, 37. But as, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And as, it is, as, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Two references to that, that those days are returning on us. You see the things that are popular today. You know, you never, in the founding of America, if you had transgenders popping out and you had people, sodomites and all those, if you had those things going, I'm talking about even after liberty was established, you would not have come in public like that. The rise of evil is here. The, the days of Noah, the returning of the days of Noah upon us. Here's CRISPR. This is DNA. We're going to get into some technical stuff here. This is the DNA um, editing tool, right, that's being used. So in other words, basically, we'll, we'll show you exactly what that is. Uh, the Cas9 protein forms a complex with a guide to RNA in a cell. You can hear number two, this complex attaches to a matching genomic DNA sequence adjacent to a spacer, yellow segment. Here it is. And here you can see it cut, uh, the, the Cas9 RNA complex cuts the double strands of the DNA right there, cuts it out, and they program the DNA. May be, the program DNA may be inserted at the cut. So in other words, they can, like, like your friend said, they're going to they're gonna edit out of their DNA the ability for that virus to affect them. But what will that edit, editing do, considering God made that DNA a certain way, and now you're messing with it? You're cutting things out of it, and you're putting things into it. What are they putting into it? What are gonna, what are they, when they do it to humans, what is that going to do? What is the effect of that? Right, it's going to make them gods, which we'll talk about next week uh, when we talk about AI. We're not going to get to that this week because this afternoon I'm going to preach a sermon to you out of Mark chapter 14. Anyway, using CRISPR to develop superior corn hybrids, right? Here you go. This is, and I just put some of the head articles in there just so you can see them. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of it just to show you that they're there, right? This is what they're doing. So your corn is, CRISPR is going to develop superior corn hybrids. Right? And what farmer's not going to want to do that? See, it's always, all of this technology is in the name of good. In the name, that's how the Antichrist is going to come. He's going to, he's going to bring peace, right? He's going to come in, and with flatteries, he's going to take the, king, the, the kingdom, right? That's, it's all good. It's all, it's all for the good of man, right? It's all, we got to stop those Christians because, you know what? You're holding society back. Remember hearing that from people? You're, you're really holding society back. Like, your, your stubborn views on the Bible, this book right here is holding society back from progressing. We're trying to progress on, and you're in our way. So what are we going to do? Maybe we'll just cut, it, cut you out of our DNA. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll just cut you out, right? We're just going to cut you out of there, right? But this is what they use it for. Uh, here's what, uh, I, I thought it was interesting that the International Creation, ICR, said this. They said, I suspect that if today's geneticists and molecular biologists can accomplish such technical wonders as gene splicing and cloning, that the much greater intelligence of Satan could potentially have done it too. Well, I believe that. The inner workings of the DNA molecule would not have been hidden from the prying eyes of Satan and his henchmen. If today animal genes can be inserted into human DNA, could not it have been accomplished by malevolent spiritual beings bent on destruction of the image of God? Now, that was very insightful for John Morris because there's a lot of things that, that, that ICR misses, like geocentricity. But anyway, th this point that he makes here is, is true, okay? That Satan is way more advanced than any... Where do you, by the way, where do you think most scientists get their knowledge from and their increase? Obviously, God allows scientists to be able to learn things, right? But when you see the Antichrist bent on science, like look at um, Elon Musk. That guy's an antichrist figure like you wouldn't believe. Goes on there and, and, and they, they try to make a profession of faith, have him make a profession of faith on, what show was that? I forgot what it was. The, oh, the Babylon Bee guys, right? They're, they're put, and Elon Musk is clearly an antichrist figure, clearly, right? Clearly he's not a Christian or anything like that, right? And he mocks Christians and so does the Babylon Bee for the most part. But the, the point is, um, when you see this, Satan had advanced knowledge and understanding of things. Like, you don't think Satan could have taught them how to manipulate DNA? Oh, yeah. Or fallen angels couldn't have taught them to do that? Well, yeah. 
Of course they could have. Where do you think these, when, by the way, I didn't have time to put this in here, but when you talk about, when you talk about some of these issues and you talk about technology and you find out where these people got it from, most of them are from dreams and visions. The advanced technology of the things that they've done, dreams and visions. That's where they, they, they testify to it. They tell you that's where they got it. Well, where'd those come from? Well, not from God. <laughs> God's not giving them visions of doing the things that they're doing, right? Where'd they get it from? The devil. They get it from following devils, right? How does CRISPR work? We'll give you a little, a short definition. Almost every cell in your body has a genome. Your genome is your complete set of DNA that makes you unique. Think of it as your personal barcode. <laughs> to edit your DNA, scientists use a process they observed in E. coli bacteria. E. coli has a built-in immune system that enables it to destroy viruses that may try to attack it. CRISPR refers to the DNA sequences in the bacteria's genome that help it identify threatening viruses. When the system is triggered, the bacteria cut the DNA of the offending virus in half. Scientists are now learning to use that same DNA cutting process to cut sections of DNA in plant, animal, and human cells to edit away parts that could cause diseases or other problems. What could possibly go wrong? After the DNA, the DNA is cut, the cell realizes its DNA is damaged and tries to repair it. Scientists can use the cell's built-in DNA repair machinery to then introduce the changes they want to make to that genome. This type of gene editing like using word processing software to delete or correct a typo can shut off a gene or change the order of its genome letters. Yeah, and they're playing God. Like Satan said, in the garden, he shall be as gods. How? Well, we'll just make you one. We'll just make you one in your own flesh. We'll just, your, your family, so let's just say, here's, and here's the emotional plea. Let's say your family has a history of a certain disease that it's prone to, maybe breast cancer. Nobody wants their children to have breast cancer. No, nobody. So then they'll go in, right? And they'll go into the DNA, or I'm, I'm saying, I don't know if they can do this now, but per, that's what they want to do. They'll go in there and they'll edit it out. They've already successfully cured multiple people with sickle cell disease. I heard that, sickle cell anemia and all those other things, they cured them with those HIV also. Sickle cell anemia is different than sickle okay. cell disease. Okay. Sickle cell anemia makes there are some issues with it, but it makes people immune to malaria. Okay. Sickle cell disease is when you get both of the traits okay. combined and then it's like And they've healed that they've cured that cured through through CRISPR. Yeah, it's a devastating disease. Right. Through editing, right? Editing your DNA. And who's gonna when you start doing this, where does it stop exactly? Where does it stop? Right? Where, where does that stop when you're having children? Well, think about it. When you, when you go to the hospital, what do they have you fill out? Family health history. Yes. Right? With a bunch of symptoms. Yes. That's not arbitrary. They put that into databases and they sell that data to pharmaceutical companies and to other Who develop things that... Yeah, and they develop treatments for these things. And eventually it's going to be, you're, gonna get, you're probably going to get an ad on Google like, hey... I, I'll get one. That'll be great. With a single, okay, the type of gene editing, like, okay, like using word processing software to delete or correct a typo. So, like, just like, look at your DNA. Oh, there's like a, a typo in your, well, God made a mistake in your DNA, and we're just going to fix that. Does that scare you at all? Does that like, I mean, I know most of us wouldn't do that, but, but what if you had the temptation to do that? Where does it go? Where, where, where does it stop? Right? With a single treatment, researchers recently cured a rare liver disorder in mice by editing the mutated gene that caused the disease. CRISPR might also help researchers make more specific antibiotics that can kill diseases causing bacteria without eliminating the good bacteria. Okay, so they recently, there was, um, I don't know if it was HIV or something else, I can't remember. But they had they they cured it in two or three in, in a number of people and I can't remember what. HIV. That yeah. Was with a, a different type of bone uh, stem cell transplant. 
right with stem through stem cells. So they're they're constantly. So what are they? What is the goal? To perfect man in the flesh, that you'll be as gods. Right, to remove the fall of man. Right, the effects of the fall of man. So like, which we'll talk about next week. Elon Musk, he has Neuralink, right? And Neuralink is going to be for depression. So does it, has anybody ever suffered anxiety or depression? Well, I have. Okay, I, I have. So all you have to do is put this Neuralink in and it's gone. So are you. So are you. Think about that. If successful, CRISPR could one day edit away virtually any illness driven by a genetic mutation, be it in the DNA in your own cells or in the cells of a virus that has invaded your body. Right? You think about the, the work that's gone on, which we have no idea really of everything in this new vaccine, right? This vaccine that's been pushed by everybody. We don't know everything. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know the effects of it either. We don't know. We don't know. The BRCA gene uh, that substantially increases risk for breast cancer, the genes that cause cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, their genetic codes found in your genome, inside almost every cell in your body could be snipped out. Well, we can just make you live forever. If this works, imagine correcting gene mutations so that you can turn an inherited disease into suddenly you don't have the disease. You're cured, you're healed. You know, the Bible calls your DNA a book, right? Psalm 139, 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth, parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Pastor Hoggard taught me this, to understand this better from, from the scriptures with that. But let me, let me ask you something. What, what do they do with this book? They edit it. So now what do they want to do with the other book? This is, this is a book. Your DNA is a book. They knew that before. God knew that and said that before scientists ever figured out that your DNA was a book, right? That your, the, the, the genome, you know, the map of your genome, they call it, and all those other things, right? All, God knew it. God wrote it, right? God wrote it just like he wrote this book, and they want to change this one, and they want to change this one, right? Right? Here you go. Scientists made a mouse that's 4% human. What is that? I have no idea. That's a mouse. A human. I don't know. A human. Or a malman. I don't know. Yeah, they just fed it Cheetos. I don't know. Scientists made a mouse that's 4% human. Now, I, I don't know, but this should bother you. Because, okay, what they tell you they're doing... And what they're really doing are two different things. If you think they're not taking kids and people and everybody else and they're not injecting them with this stuff and they're not making things in labs, then you believe Fauci's story about, about what happened over in China. You believe that. Like, you believe everything he said. And you really do believe that that virus just happened in some wet market somewhere. It wasn't created in a lab where everybody got sick in the lab before it was released and all of them were hospitalized before, before that virus was released into the air. It wasn't that. And, and, and you would also believe that it's the evil Chinese that did it when we're the one that paid the evil Chinese to do it. You might believe that too. But I don't know. I can believe that when I believe they took 4% of, they put 4% of a human inside of a mouse. I, I believe it, don't you? Did you see the fine print there? No. The major oh. Toward a new medical reality. Wow, you got good eyes, Lee. I thought you couldn't... Wait a minute. You told me you had bad eyes. How'd you read that? Yep, chimera yet. And a major step towards... This is supposed to be... Here's a chimera, right? Here's a mouse that we injected with and made 4% human. That should scare you a little bit. Two weeks after the researchers injected human stem cells into the developing mouse embryos, one of the newborn mice exhibited 4% human cells, a major advance. Considering human and animal cells don't typically jive well, well, duh, God never meant them to. They're not supposed to jive or juke. Um, while they're still mostly just mice, mostly, 
mostly, and only a tad bit human, the breakthrough marks a step toward more advanced genetically modified embryos in the future. How come I'm not excited about that? <laughs> How come that is, you're walking around, but I mean, it gives a whole new meaning, like if you kill a mouse, it's like, is that 4% human? Did I just, because I've been killing a lot of mice, so I'm like, uh oh. All I can see is bad plots to very horrible movies of human, my, human mice escaping labs. <laughs> why is, why, and you thought those things were just bad plots from movies long ago. And they're going to be true. Like, okay, for instance, what happened? Wait, who remembers? Lee, I told you the story about... What were those crazy monkeys that escaped the lab? They were monkeys that, remember I told you that? That truck that's from the side of the road? Yeah. What were those, what did they say those monkeys were and they had to kill them all? all. Yeah, they, es what's that? Humanities. I don't know, but they were, they were monkeys that, they were, yeah, they were like made in some lab or something somewhere and the, the car went off the road and the monkeys escaped and they sent out hitmen to shoot all the monkeys and kill them all right away. Be but one did get away. I'm not kidding you. It did. One did get away. So back when I was in high school, I read a book about how they want to mix salamander DNA into people. This is like back in 2008. Because salamanders can regrow their tails when they're chopped off. You were in what grade in 2008? I'm old. So they wanted, they, they wanted to use this technology to help people regrow limbs. Oh, by like a salamander. I, that that doesn't scare me at all. So, so they're going to be able to cut people's arms off and grow them back and all sorts of things. I'm not volunteering for that. It's coming. So in other words, basically, you'll be salamander man. <laughs> but that's not new because Satan comes as an angel. He's a dragon. Right? And that's not figurative. God says it very plainly. That old, that old serpent, the dragon, right? So it, it says these creatures come out of the earth. It doesn't say God made them. Right. I didn't say God made them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, those are, we build labs in the earth. We right. That's where all this stuff gets done. Right. And that's where all the devils are. That's where a group of devils are, too, that are very mad. Mm -hmm. That are very mad. And weird things happen underneath the sea and... Dead things form under the earth, under the water, right? Yeah. Anyway, this is taking on a weird sci-fi thing, but that's that's the way it is. That's but that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, all those bad sci-fi movies and books that people yeah. read years ago, they're all like here. This is the Twilight Zone. Like Paul always says, truth is stranger than fiction, right? International team creates first chimeric human monkey embryos. Are they the ones that escaped the lab? I don't know. But. They might be. Uh, that was in April 15, 2021, but uh, probably not. But anyway, uh, who knows? We don't know. We just know they're working on them, right? Look at who's involved in it. They're telling us now. You know, you know oh, yeah. A team of scientists from the U.S. and China and Spain reported Thursday they have created the first embryos that were part human and part monkey and kept them alive for up to 20 days in laboratory dishes. So, by the way, does anybody really think that the aborted babies and their cells and all the things and that, like, does anybody really, do you think that there's no experimentation going on with, with all those things? Well, I've been there for a while. Look at the uh, vans coming in and out of the research. I mean, right. Because, see, when they look at a baby and you look at a baby, you see two different things. They see dollar signs when they look at one for their body parts. That's, that's how they look at them. See, that's just, see, I, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of Republicans and Democrats because they, they call it abortion. It's murder. You're murdering babies. You're killing babies. That's what you're doing. Stop soft selling it. You know, uh, the, the LGBTQ transgender movement is complete. All those things have completely taken over that Republican Party or what's left of it. And they're all the same. They just all, they're, they're all the same. Yes. Right, there was no limitations any longer on doing those experiments. Warp speed. Japan approves growing human organs in animals for the first time. 
So the research involves implanting modified animal embryos with humans. Scientists in Japan will begin trying to grow human organs in animals after receiving government permission for the first study of its kind in the country. So that's... That was, that, was, that was back in August 2019, so how far has it progressed now? And don't worry, COVID hasn't stopped it any. They're still making things in labs. The Cutting Edge article said this, but controversial research involves implanting modified animal embryos with human-induced pluripotent stems, cells that can be coaxed into forming the building blocks of any part of the body. There you go. Hey, look at that. It's Wilbur. Um, but maybe not. Maybe that's a man. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe, maybe he's 4% something else. Um, how scientists grew human muscles in pig embryos and why it matters for organ transplants. See? So now we're taking human organs, at human muscles, and we're going to grow them inside Wilbur. I bet you don't want that arm or that muscle. But anyway, th that's what they're doing, right? What could possibly go wrong? Because, you know, there's more pigs, so you could just keep making pigs to make hybrids out of them and grow human muscles inside pigs. Wouldn't you want human pig muscles? Don't you want that? I don't think Faith wants that. She's laughing about it. The little pigs bouncing around the lab looked exceedingly normal. <laughs> Again, this sounds like a bad plot. <laughs> then, no. Yet their adorable exterior hid a remarkable secret. <laughs> Each piglet carried two different sets of genes. For now, both sets came from their own species, but one day, one of those sets may be human. So, by the way, what they're doing with children today, they're giving them three parents, right? They're, they're, they're doing... So why should he have a kid with mom, dad, and a dog? That's coming. But these, right? This is, this is, but it'll be in the name of, of prosperity, the name of, of helping people. Like, you don't want somebody to die, or you don't want somebody to have a bad arm. So, yeah, that's, that's uh, Paul calls them uh, one-world do-gooders. That's what he calls them, right? Did I say that right, Brother Paul? That's, that's what you call them, and that's what they are, right? And if you do it in the name of that, well, everybody will be fine with that. I mean, if you did it in the name of Christ, they'd crucify you. But if you do it in the name of, of that... In the name of being a do-gooder or a one-world do-gooder, then you know what? You got it. The study led by do uh, doctors Mary and Daniel Gary at the University of Minnesota, hey, right here at home, uh, had a therapeutic point. Engineering a brilliant way to replace muscle loss, especially for the muscles around our skeletons that allow us to move and navigate the world. Trauma and injuries, such as from firearm wounds or car crashes, can damage muscle tissue beyond the point of repair. Unfortunately, muscles are also stubborn in that donor tissue from ca cadavers doesn't usually take at the injury site. So we'll take it from a pig. For now, there are no effective treatments for severe muscle death called vol volumetric, volumetric muscle loss. So there's no cure, right? Here's what they say. The shortage of, of organs for heart transplantations, vascular grafting, and skeletal muscle is staggering. Human animal chimeras could have a seismic impact that transforms organ transplantation and helps solve the organ shortage crisis. That is, if society accepts the idea of a semi-humanoid pig. What's wrong with those people? They will. So they call them chimeras. Yes. Yeah, they call them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it all pushes an agenda, though. By the way, how hard is organ transplants in the lists and everything else? You got that guy that didn't want to take a vaccine, so they told him, well, you're just going to die. If you don't take that vaccine, we're not giving you an organ transplant. We're taking you off the list. Why? Well, because you won't take our vaccine. And some of you might say, well, why didn't he just take it? Because he doesn't want to. That's why, and he shouldn't have to. Amen. Why should he have to? Yeah. That has nothing to do with his, with his surgery. That's right. Right? That has nothing to do with that. That's, it. That's, his, that's his choice to make. Right? That's right. And by the way, somebody, yeah, anyway. Uh, unlike previous attempts at making human chimeras, the team when scoured, then scoured, excuse me, the genetic landscape. Let me scour the genetic landscape. I don't know how that works, but of how pig and human embryos developed to find any genetic breaks 
that could derail the process. One gene, TP53, stood out, which was then prominently eliminated with CRISPR. What did we do? We eliminated it. <laughs> we just deleted it. We went in there with our computer program. We're like, oh, you're in our way? Gone. Done. It's like that bug smasher game. You just hit your finger on the, the on. It's in the way and you're done. Eliminated. I got a question for you. I think we're almost done, aren't we, Brother Andrew? These are the grapes of escrow, right? You know, this is really interesting because I want to ask you a question about this because we talk about farming, we talk about hybridization in, in, in plants and everything else and growing and better ways. Lee, would you say that there's been better ways to grow things? They've figured out genetically how to do, they've used that. Well, well, the Bible actually talks about this a little bit. It gives us the idea. Here's one question to ask yourself. How in the world did those giants make clusters of grapes that big? Because no one else did, it was found where they were at. They did it to eat, so how did they know? It wasn't just because they're big people, so because they're big creatures, they could make big things. No, they had to know how to do that. So Numbers 13, 23, and they came out of the brook of Eschol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook Eschol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. So two men have to carry this. This is a branch. This is not the whole thing. Two men are carrying these on a pole. That's heavy. That's a lot. Yeah. How did they do that? How did they, how did they make those? Well, they knew how to genetically modify things. That's how they made them, because there's no other way they could have. Yes, Israel was a land, uh, a fruitful land. We know that. But these are giant. These were giant. These weren't just like a bountiful harvest. This is food for giants, right? That's what they, that was part of their food, what they ate. So they took it. So those two men had to cut down that branch and they, are, and they had to cut that down and they had to carry it on stage. And they're carrying that with two Men, a heavy load, and these are grapes. These aren't like bricks or blocks or like heavy, heavy things like that, besides them being heavy due to the fact that the size of the fruit. They knew how to genetically modify those to feed themselves. Where did they get that knowledge? Same place CRISPR came from. Same place these other people got it from. Same place the technological wizards get it from. Same place they're figuring out how to edit DNA and how they're going to make a perfect baby for you. You're going to be able to go to them and you're going to say, we want to have a baby, but we want to make sure its genes are good. Yeah. Right? Can you take out depravity out of their genes? Now, they won't use that word, but what they're really saying, can you take out the effects of the fall of man out of my genes? Because see, all of us have effects of the fall of man. All of us, in the Bible, you'll see men that died of many different things. Some of them died of sicknesses that they caught. Some of them were genetic sicknesses that would pass on, right? All of us have sicknesses that passed on from Adam. All of us do. Why? Because of the fall. The effects of the fall on our mind. Oh, can you, we, uh, our family is prone to anxiety and depression. Can you check the DNA inside of there and can you edit that out? That's the, the part of the DNA that as they search through the genome, as they search through that map of everything of your personal DNA, or, and they look to see where that is and they edit that out so your child doesn't have that? Or if your child is, or if your family has a, a lineage of, 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 of breast cancer or any other cancers, well, maybe, or colon cancer or anything else, right? Maybe we, can, maybe we can just edit that out. Would you be tempted to do that? Would you be tempted to have your baby design, a designer baby made? Right? Well, I mean, you could be as gods. You could make a baby, a perfect baby, that, that didn't have any of these other flaws in them. Right? Autism, right? They're on the spectrum. It's a history of that in your family. Well, we'll just go ahead and edit that out. We'll just go ahead and do that. But you can't edit out the fall of man. You can't edit out the effects of the fall. You can't. There's only one way that you can be made new, and that's your body will not be made new on this side unless Jesus meets us in the air. Amen? Right. If we're alive and well. Amen? And Jesus meets us in the air, then you get the perfect body. But you're not going to get a perfect mind and body here. You're going to have frailties and you're going to have problems. And if they edit out every one of those other things, they will not get ahead of God. Amen. 
right? Something will kill you, like it does all of us. You will die from something. But as they try to prolong, and we'll talk about that more next week when we talk about AI, Neuralink, the merging of man and machine, those, that type of hybridization, because there's another side of it that we need to talk about. That's a different side altogether. And I didn't want to try to put that into two, uh, into one, because for sake of time, it just wouldn't work. But, and I wanted to focus more on that so you understood this is what they're doing. Like I talked about that years ago, Google Gods, remember that? And those other things. This is what they want to do. Listen, friend, the only way that 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 you can be saved is not in this flesh it's by the spirit of god you're saved by grace through faith your flesh is going to die and the sooner you accept that if you've never been saved that you're a lost hell-bound sinner and you deserve to die for your sin and you love your sin and god hates your sin and God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for your sins and he was buried and he rose again from the dead to give you life and that life is in him and that eternal life starts to the day you get saved it starts the day that you trust Christ you have eternal life but you're gonna die in this flesh this flesh is gonna fall to the ground no man can perfect this flesh they will do their best and they will continue to try to mock God and they will try to fulfill Genesis chapter 3 and they will they will try to make you as gods they will do their best to do that they'll do everything they can to do that but in the end they will never be able to do that because your body will go into the ground and your soul if you are not saved you will die and go to a devil's hell and it's not because God is bad it's because you are it's because men are bad men are corrupt and men are sinners and they love their sin. But Jesus Christ loves, loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for sinners. And then he was buried and rose again from the dead. And he came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. There are some that are going to end up taking the mark of the beast. And they're going to choose to live forever in this flesh, a sinner. And they will die in their sins. But you know what? If you're not saved here, you'll die in your sins. If you don't trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, there must be a time when you confessed your lost condition to Jesus Christ. You cried out to him for salvation and you repented and believed the gospel. There must be a time because the only hope is the gospel. Amen. We are all dead men. We are all as dead men before the four gospels, before that breath of life comes into us, and we are saved by the grace of God. The gospel is very simple. It is not complex. It is not hard to understand. Jesus made it simple. He that believeth on the Son hath life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Do you believe on the Son of God? Amen! That's the gospel. It's not how you feel. It's not what you're going through. It's not anything else. The gospel is plain. He that believeth on the Son hath life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The question is, do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Because that is the way of salvation. Amen. It's no more than that. And it could never be less than that. It must be Christ and Christ alone. Always. It is the simplicity that is found in Christ. This is confusion. Christ is simple. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The gospel is very simple. It is not complex. It is not confusing. God made it very simple. Right? Satan confuses it, but the gospel is simple. Right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Right? Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. That's simple. That's simple faith. That's simple understanding. God made it that simple. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. That's, that's the grace of God. That's the work of God. This will end in death. No matter what they try to do, man is still going to die. They're still going to die. But those that are saved, those that are born again by the Spirit of God, they will live forever in eternity with Christ. But that flesh has to fall. It has to die in this earth. And when it's it, it dies corruptible, but it is raised in incorruption. Hallelujah, what a Savior. You either trust God on this side, and your body goes into the ground, and your soul goes to be with Him, and then He raises your body, or you die a sinner, right? Or you live a sinner until you die. But the gospel is very simple. Do you believe on the Son of God? 
Amen. I do. All my faith and trust is in who He is, not who I am. All my faith and trust is in what Jesus did for me and who He is. Amen. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the gospel. It's Jesus. It's all Jesus. All of Jesus. All of Jesus. None of me. All of Jesus is my plea. All of Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, when you're in the darkest, deepest, most terrible time of your life, it'll always be all is Jesus. When you rise up to the heights of heaven, it will always be all of Jesus. Amen. All of Jesus. You turn to him. You trust him. You believe on him with everything that God allows you to. Right? That's the gospel. That's the simple gospel. Very simple. Jesus died for sinners. He was buried and he rose again from the dead. And in him that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. That's the life that we now live. We live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. I'm glad it's not up to me. If it were, I'd be in hell. It's all up to Jesus. You better remember that. Right? You, you look in the mirror too much. You need to look above. You need to look to heaven. You need to look to Jesus. You need to keep your eyes on him. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you for the truth. Lord, we see the confusion that's in the world, and it's going to continue. Thank you, Jesus, for simplicity in Christ. Thank you for that simple understanding. Thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you that this book is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you, God, that we can cleanse our ways by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Oh, God, the deception that's coming on the world is terrible. Thank you for grace. May others have it. May those that are not saved come to Christ and be born again. May those that are, your, that are your children today, may they believe and trust every word of this book and follow you in all things. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Bless the time we have together, Lord. Bless it. Help it to be profitable unto your saints. Bless the food to our bodies. Thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen.